Hi, Warhawk Defense here. We're out here on the Warhawk Defense range again today and we're going to talk about another gun that's one of our favorites and we're going to we're going to describe it a little bit then we're going to go down there on the range and we're going to see how it uh, works against Larry, Moe, and Curly down there. Those are the same three bad guys that we took on when we were talking about the Smith & Wesson 642 in the previous video. Today we want to talk about This is actually probably my favorite gun. This is a Sig Sauer uh, P6. That's what the German designation for it is. It was originally a German police gun. Uh, when the German police decided that it was time to uh, upgrade to something else, they turned them all in. They hit the American market. Nice thing about it is the Germans make good stuff and the Germans take care of their stuff. I got this gun for about $325 and it had hardly ever been fired. The only thing on it, a little holster wear here and a little holster wear just a, a, a little bit on the sides and the finish, but boy otherwise this thing is absolutely pristine and it is a very nice gun. One thing though, it had a very hard trigger pull, very hard trigger pull, and uh, let's clear it here, alright it is cleared. Uh, it does have decock right here, so if you notice when I pull this, the trigger resets itself and the hammer drops. It's got, it's got this decock lever right here. No safety on it, which is nice. That's nice for carry, which I like. But originally, it had a really stiff trigger pull. Real stiff trigger pull. The stiffest I've ever seen, probably, I don't know, 20 pounds maybe or more. I think the Germans did that as a safety uh, so that it didn't accidentally go off. This gun, when I started carrying it concealed, I sent it to the Six Hour Custom Shop and they, for not a lot of money, did a, some really nice things to it. First of all, they put a new hammer. They put all new internal springs and parts in it. They did a short reset trigger and they changed the uh, weight or the amount of pounds it takes to pull the trigger. Now it has a very normal average trigger pull. The kind of a trigger pull you'd expect on a semi-automatic pistol that is a double action, single action type gun. Uh, now it's it's in real good shape to carry. Also they did, and that's uh, clear now so I'm going to turn it around, they did a target uh, bevel, an 11 degree target barrel on the end of the muzzle, which really added some accuracy to it. So now it doesn't make this a trick gun of any kind, doesn't make it illegal, doesn't do anything like that, but it certainly brought it up to more modern standards and boy it made it a really nice carry gun. It is a single stack magazine, that means it holds eight rounds, single stack, nice thing about that is it has a very nice thin grip. It's an all metal gun and it fits my hand like a glove. I really like this gun. I really like it. Yeah, okay. Right. I'll try and get there if I can. Yeah, all right. I'll do what I can. Hey, old man, give me that sweet phone and truck. Hey, whoa. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, wait, 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 wait. You want my phone? All right, no problem. You want this nice truck? Hold on, I'll, I'll get the keys, they're right here. Hold on. Stay back, stay back, don't move. None of you move. Stay there, stay there. I said stay there. Okay, well you saw uh, how it went. Uh, one of the problems obviously is trying to draw from concealment. Uh, the other problem is trying to get your other access to your other ammunition, dropping out your magazine, those kind of things. Now what I'm stuck with is a gun that's live, but, and it is still hot. Um, we've got the hammer back, we're ready to go. Now this is where this decock comes in. Now I simply can decock by doing this. I can drop the 
mag. I can rack it. There goes that live round. It is now clear. All right, and now I can reholster. And that's what I'd be doing. Uh, I'd be like this, uh, trying to get onto my phone, call 91, and waiting for the cops to show up. Okay. Uh, but what you can see is, in a real scenario, it's not all that easy to get your gun out, find your other magazine, get it reloaded. This is stuff that you got to practice. And, you know, we don't practice when we do this filming. We just do it on one take because it simulates what might happen in real life. So anyway, we'll stop here. We'll go down range, see if we got Larry, Moe, and Curly, and if we were able to stop them. Okay, here we are. Uh, let's see what damage we did. You'll notice that these same three guys, Larry, Moe, and Curly here, two of them had knives, one of them had a gun. Uh, this guy had the gun here in the middle. And uh, I managed to put one good round on him right there. Um, out of those rounds I fired, that hopefully would have been a stopping round. Uh, again, it's pretty hard to shoot on the move like that. Let's see how I did with these other guys. This guy had a knife. He was on the end. I managed to get three shots. One down the center, one down there in the groin, one down in the lower groin. Uh, obviously, this guy was probably out of commission. Um, my eyes were naturally kind of drawn to to this edge because when I shoot competition, I usually start on one side or another. What that tells me is I need to concentrate on the guy who has the most threat, which is the gun, which I did not do very well, did I? Because I only had one shot on him. I had three shots on the guy on the far side with the knife. Well, that's probably because that's the way I practice. All right, let's take a look at this, this other guy, Larry here. Larry, well, it looks like I had one up in here. I definitely had high chest. I had middle chest, I had lower, and I got one down there. One, two, three, four. Four good shots in this guy, but you know what? This is the guy that I that I took from behind the truck. After I reloaded and, uh, and I had a chance to settle down a little bit, I concentrated on this guy and put more good shots in him. What that should tell you and tell me is that you obviously shoot a lot better when you have time to concentrate, when you have time to really aim, when you have time to get good shots. 